You're watching Cycle Talk, Australia's motorcycle show. From sports bikes to motocross to cruisers, we love them all. We ride them, thrash them, test them, and sometimes we even crash them. Thanks for joining us on Cycle Talk TV. This episode, we have the Kawasaki Versys X300, a versatile, lightweight, adventure style road bike which isn't afraid of gravel roads. We look at how Oggy Knobs can save you at the hip pocket, and the Custom Talk boys look into the world of Ducatista. First, though, we have lots of news. That's the sound of the new V4 powered Ducati Panigale, part of a short video being used to tease us as we get close to the launch of the new bike. If you're thinking it sounds like the MotoGP Desma Sedici, I think you'd be right. A righteous four pot scream which will make you feel fast even if you couldn't qualify for a D grade junior race, let alone a MotoGP. But what does it look like? Well, this is about the best we could find so far, an image which has leaked out onto the internet which definitely shows the Ducati heritage, but it's still distinctly different from the V-Twins which preceded it. So, it will be an 1100cc 90 degree V4 named the Desma Sedici Stradale, which borrows part of its name from Ducati's GP machines, and Stradale means road in Italian. Ducati says the new engine is undoubtedly suited to the track but has also been designed to respond to the needs of the road rider, so we thought we'd take a closer look. The road-growing Stradale will be slightly larger in capacity at 1103 cc's than the R-Spec race engine, which is expected in 2019. Ducati will have to make it under 1000 cc's to comply with World Superbike homologation rules, and this should give it a bit more usability in the low to mid-rev range for everyday riders, but it will be more than likely down on overall horsepower compared to the R model. Not that that matters, because the output is still expected to exceed 210 horsepower. Now I reckon the changes are in line with what we're seeing from manufacturers with their flagship sports bikes. And that's to make them much easier to go fast on. Sports bike sales are on the wane globally, and it's not because of the engines, it's because they're so track focused in setup. So yes, they're easier to go fast on, but that doesn't necessarily make them easy to go slower on when you have to. I think Ducati is desperate to win a World Superbike and or MotoGP title, and the V4 engine configuration is showing plenty of promise at winning a MotoGP title this year. And all the best to Ducati in their Superbike endeavours in 2019 with the Panigale V4. The current Panigale Superbike should have been a world championship machine as well, but Johnny Ray, Tom Sykes and the Kawasaki ZX-10R have been too consistent, too fast and almost unbeatable. So it's a bit sad to see the big V-twin Ducatis go out on a, on a note where they haven't won the title. They say racing improves the breed though, and the Desma Sedici Stradale might have just hit the right combination of tradition and innovation to not only take that superbike title, but to make the whole Ducati lineup better machines in the process. For a full look at the Ducati V4 engine, head to the Cycle Talk website. Footage has emerged of Valentino Rossi walking on crutches just days after surgery from a broken leg. The doctor's off happened on his in enduro bike, which practically all racers ride because it's good training, but it's not the first time we've seen a championship contender injure themselves mid-season. So Vale reckons he'll have to find another way to prepare for the races, and gives himself a good chance of being back for the Japanese round at the MotoGP Championship at Mategi in about four weeks' time. We've also seen a bit of footage from Triumph this week. Its new Moto2 engine has been shaken down on the dyno and at the track. Julien Simon, the 2009 125cc world champion and Moto2 runner-up, was the lucky SOB to put the Triumph prototype engine through its paces. Have a listen. <laughs> Triumph 
Triumph has been announced as the Moto2 engine supplier from 2019, with the class moving from 600cc Honda 4s to a 765cc triple. Australian Speedway ace Jason Doyle has shot out to a 10-point lead in the World Speedway Grand Prix, with three rounds of the championship remaining, the last of which will be held in Melbourne. We love watching Speedway GPs here at Cycle Talk. It's got to be the rawest form of motor racing that exists. The other thing we like is how the championship is scored, with each race scoring three, two, one or zero points for the four riders in each event. That means plenty of racing in the, in the night and the championship is always tight. Seeing Doyle crowned in Australia will be one of the highlights of the sporting calendar and we're cheering him on. We're still a few months away from the Tokyo Motorcycle Show in Eichma, the really big show in Milan, but there's already news of some interesting machinery coming our way in 2018. Kawasaki has released this teaser video of the retro Z900 RS. It looks to be playing very much on the heartstrings of riders old enough to remember the early Z900s and those passionate enough about classic machinery to care. Me, I reckon it looks great, and by the time I was old enough to buy a big Kawasaki, we were already into bikes like the GPZ1100, so it is pretty old style. Triumph looks like it's going to really target the lambs market in the coming years with a deal to produce small capacity bikes in India. Most of these will be built for the local market, but like KDM and Harley-Davidson before it, Expect to see some subcontinent built Trumpies soon. And here's a fun one for the kids. Suzuki Australia is holding a good old fashioned colouring competition, giving an aspiring young rider aged between 6 and 12 years the chance to win their very own DRZ70 or Quad Sport Z50 and 500 bucks worth of riding apparel. Mum and dads can download the stencil from Suzuki's website and where there's more information on how to enter. Time to get colouring in, kiddies. Oh, and uh, remember, Suzuki's are usually yellow. Lastly, Cycle Talk is brought to you by riders just like you, supporters of Cycle Talk. For as little as $1 or so per month, you can become a supporter and help us produce the bike stories you would like to read and watch. More information at cycletalk.com.au slash support. Cycle Talk magazine is available in print and digital. Get it from better bike shops around the country or download from the Cycle Talk app or from cycletalk.com.au. The latest issues feature Yamaha's YZ450F, Ducati's new Supersport and BMW's G310R. And there's a feature on the Metzler MC360 off-road tyre. How to ride in all seasons on a budget and lots of news and opinion too. If you love bikes, you'll love Cycle Talk and it's all free, both the print and digital editions. Find out lots more at cycletalk.com.au and follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. After the break, we ride the Kawasaki Versys X300. This bike test is brought to you by Avon Tyres. The 250 to 500cc Lambs Market Learner Approved Motorcycle Scheme is a really, really good place to start when you're learning to ride a motorcycle. And Kawasaki has been king of the hill in that class for many years with the Ninja 300 and the 250 before that. This bike is almost a variation on that. It's the Versys X300. Now, it's got a very similar motor to those Ninjas and it's a really, really neat package that's priced at about $6,399 plus on-road costs. So not much more than $7,000 on the road, depending on where you live in the country. And for that, you get a versatile machine. It's not a go-everywhere adventure bike, despite its appearance. It's still a road bike, but they do say it's more than capable off paved roads. So onto gravel, a bit of, uh, a bit of very light dirt, no problem at all. So we're going to try that out during this test. So it's got a 19 inch front wheel, 17 inch rear wheel, and they're both laced as, as you have for off-road machinery. The bike itself has been designed 
to be very easy to ride and capable at low speeds, but also it's got a tall top gear so it doesn't rev too hard on the highway. We're gonna go and take it out, we're gonna go and test it a few different roads and we'll see what we find. The engine's a twin cylinder four stroke. It's a good compromise between uh, low vibration, a single cylinder bike will invariably vibrate a lot more, good highway performance, it'll sit on the speed limit pretty, really, pretty well for a Lambs bike, and it's a lot of fun to ride. Top gear is fairly tall, so it's really quite smooth and economic in sixth. The Versi features an assist and slipper clutch, which is really surprising in an economic small capacity bike. But the advantage is that the assist part of that equation gives you a really light clutch. It's really, really light at the lever here. And the slipper clutch means it's less likely to uh, lock up on downshifts and get it out of shape. Take it from me, having the assist and slipper clutch is gonna make life a lot easier for learner riders and a lot more fun for advanced riders too. Versys X300 features a fairly tall screen, and that's a great thing on the freeway. It really does cut that buffeting down. You can still see straight over the top, no problem at all, but it just keeps that weather protection level much higher than on most bikes in the class. Front suspension's non-adjustable. There's a, a big single disc that looks really, really trick, and it works reasonably well. You do need to give the brakes a pretty good squeeze, but I'm very happy with the brakes. Only thing I don't like, brake lever's not adjustable. Standard equipment is a very handy grab rail and rack. It's very easy to strap, uh, strap some luggage onto, but there's also lots of Kawasaki options to give yourself more luggage if you need it. The Kawasaki Versys X300. At first glance, you might think it's gonna be not powerful enough. Physically, it's reasonably large and you just wonder whether it's gonna be good at anything. And the, the reaction to that when I've tested it is, it's actually good at everything. Now, does it handle as well as a, as a Ninja 300, you know, on a nice smooth road? No, it doesn't. Can it go off road like a, a KLX? Of course not. Is it, is it an adventure bike? And no, it's not an adventure bike. But for someone who wants to jump on a machine and just ride it, it's fantastic. It can go over speed bumps without even uh, batting an eyelid. You've got longer travel suspension and it just soaks them up really, really well. You can go onto dirt roads and I was actually surprised at how much better it is on uh, gravel and, and soft stuff than I expected. Again, it's not a dirt bike and it's not an adventure bike. But when you take a road bike onto the uh, unsealed surfaces, they're often terrible, but this is actually really pretty good. And on bumpy roads, it outhandles sports bikes. So I was riding it today on some really bumpy roads through the photo shoot, and I was going through those corners a lot faster than I would be on a stiffly sprung sports bike. So it really does cover a lot of bases. Now, it's priced at a, at a level that is affordable to just about everybody. You can add luggage, there's optional luggage, plus there's the standard rack. You can carry two people if your license allows it. And it just does everything you want it to do without any fuss or bother. Now, do you have to use the gearbox a lot because it doesn't produce a lot of power? Yes, you do. Is the seat position a little bit low compared to the, so the seat to foot peg distance is a little bit short? Yes, it is for someone who's tall like me. I would have preferred a taller, flatter seat. But for a lot of people looking at their first bike, the most important thing is to get your feet on the ground comfortably, and this is far more possible when you've got a lower seat. 
seat itself's a little bit firm, but that's okay. You can add a sheepskin or something like that if you find it too hard on a longer ride. Overall, there is very little to dislike about the Versys X300 and a lot to like. I'm gonna call this highly recommended to anybody who's a learner or doesn't have a lot of experience and is looking for this style of machine. After the break, how Oggy Knobs can save you and Custom Talk goes Jukatista. We're at the Circuit Algarve, Porto Mayo. Uh, we're at the Avon tyre test for the new Spirit ST tyre. Uh, we've got 16 motorcycles here and 15 journalists here, and we get a chance to try this new uh, Spirit ST tyre out. It's not really a track tyre, but I'm sure the journalists will be very impressed with it. We've been on the road yesterday. We found a nice little road that went all around up in the mountains and everywhere else like that. And today it's on the circuit. This is our latest uh, Hypersport Touring tyre, the Spirit ST. This tyre has been designed for a huge selection of bikes, from your lightweight sport touring bikes to your very heavyweight sport touring bikes. And the focus of this tyre really was to design a tyre that gave the ultimate grip in wet and dry weather, particularly focusing on wet performance. And we've got the latest technology in our compounds with very, very highly loaded with silica to deliver that ultimate wet performance. For a sports touring tyre, I've got to say, really good. Avon have come in with something as good and everything else. On the smaller capacity bikes, the Triumph 6 and 5s and stuff, they were brilliant. Bearing in mind we're on a track and, you know, they're meant to do 10,000 miles, and we had no problems. So, really, really good. I'm a very patriotic person. The tyres are made down in Melksham. It's a, a small knit group of people that are very much passionate about what they do. Uh, and they make a product that is as, a worldwide product. It's as good as anything out there. And it's lovely to see a small community, a small group of people working so hard and coming up with such a great product. Oggy knobs are an Australian made product that's designed to protect your bike. Now, they're not the sort of thing that's going to protect it from a major accident, but they are the sort of thing that protect it from fallovers in particular, but also even minor accidents like falling over during a U-turn. Things like that are the main things it'll do. So if your bike gets knocked over by a car while it's parked, or if you just, if you just have a bit of a, one of those moments, um, you can get away with it often if you've got oggy knobs on your machine. Now they come in a huge range of uh, styles to suit different bikes. In the end, they just look like a knob that sticks out from different places and they have axle ones, they have the main style of oggy knobs which goes somewhere near your engine to protect the major components like radiators and engines and frames and they often give a bit of bodywork and tank protection as well depending on the bike and depending on how they can be mounted, but they're there to protect crucial, uh, crucial parts. And also, if your bike does fall over and lands on an oggy knob, there's a really good chance it won't break anything critical and you'll still be able to ride the bike. Now, Phil here, one of our testers, he loves oggy knobs because he has a, a habit of uh, having senior moments and letting his bike fall over. Had in one fact, just he then. Had it, did it this morning while we were putting the bike in the studio. So, Phil, you've had a lot of experience with oggy knobs. Tell us the, some of the uh, some of the experience you've had with uh, with bikes falling over. I find that they're very good at protecting you from oops moments. Um, just when you're turning the bike around, doing a U-turn, pushing it around the garage, uh, it will save a lot of damage. It won't save you from everything but it will save you from a lot of damage and a lot of expense, and it's not a lot of expense up front to get that protection. It's kind of like an insurance policy. Yeah, so Phil, this is your Versi 650, mm -hmm. and one of the Oggy knobs is perfect, the other one's not. Tell us what happened. Well, in my particular case, I was just pushing the bike along from the wrong side, and the side stand popped up. I didn't realise it. I went to go back on the side stand on the ground. So you can, 
You can look at that from another point of view. Some people never ever push their bike from the right hand side of the machine, always go to the left hand side, but sometimes that's not very convenient. So having oggy knobs can really save you. Now you've got the main oggy knobs. Did you have any trouble fitting these, mate? Uh, these particular ones went on pretty good. The quality of the steel work that sits behind the knob uh, is, is first class. Um, they went on pretty easy. I, I think some bikes, you may have to remove a bit of fairing, but oggy knobs are always very strong in that regard uh, in terms of the mounting brackets. Oggy knobs are actually available, um, so they come in a kit to suit your bike, but if you do have a moment, if you do uh, damage something because of a, a, an oops moment, you can actually buy replacement spare parts and make it all look perfect again, uh, which is a big difference between Oggy and some of the competitors. The other point that Oggy really like to make is that all the components there, CNC machined, really high quality steel, really high quality uh, componentry that make up the product. Now the other thing that uh, we want to mention here is you, it's not just about the big knobs, you've got the axle knobs as well. Yes, and, and they're very good because often if the bike does go down the road, it'll slide on the front fork and you need a new front fork, which is very expensive. You put the nog on there and it avoids that cost completely. Yeah, so that's an extra one that you can put on and if not, you choose to. They're not expensive and, and they go on really easy if you've got a so whole axle. Prices do vary. The, uh, the front axle knobs are around about $99 depending on the model and the, the kits range from about $299 to $499. And there's some bikes that you can get optional kits where you might have to cut the fairing to fit it, but there's often a, a kit available where you don't have to cut the fairing as well. So the vast majority of bikes, they just bolt on. You don't have to uh, make any modifications to the machine, but it just depends on which bike you've got. If you go to kenmar.com.au, you can find out a lot more information about which Oggy knobs are available for your machine and, and how they can be fitted. Sydney Olympic Park, Jukatista. So what's it all about? We're here to smash the Guinness Book of Records, the most Ducatis on a single ride. The record currently stands just over 400. We intend to smash it. Being the Ferrari of motorcycles, they just love the brand. They absolutely got crazy about it. Fanatical is the right word. They're very striking. I see a lot of bikes around, but I always spot a Ducati. I've had a couple of BMWs. People I used to talk to said, well, you're never a real motorcyclist until you've had a Ducati. The Ducati itself, that signature, little clutch sound, just rattling away, and just the V-twin, beautiful. Can't go past it. Some people, it's performance. To other people, it's just art. You know, they're beautiful machines. There's not many other bikes that you can actually just look at. People have got them in their lounge rooms. Italian design and engineering at its best. This is the first note of the bike when you start it. It just sounds insane. Just the type of bike it is, the way they look, the way they sound, the attitude they have on the road. They're just like nothing else. I think there's different aspects to owning a Ducati. One is you can customise it. To other people it's about how you ride it. And to other people it's just the bond between fellow riders. It's a lifestyle. It's not just getting from A to B. It's not just about the bikes. This is also about our friends. It bonds a lot of people together. The club in general is fantastic. The love people have for each other. I've met now some of my best friends through the club. If someone's having a hard time, people step up. There's not many clubs that you can say that about. You join a network of people that are very like-minded and have that same passion and uh, enjoy the sounds of these engines. So we had the numbers. We had about 490 Ducatis, so that was just absolutely beautiful and sounded amazing. Unfortunately, we had some over-enthusiastic cars filming. They broke the parade up and uh, we can't count it now, so uh, we'll have to do it again. The bikes do have to run in uh, sequentially and you know, in formation. So we've had a great day. We've ended up here at Sydney on Bondi Beach at the Pavilion, surrounded by some great bikes and some lovely people. But it's been such a hot day, now we're gonna treat ourselves and go off for ice cream.
What do you mean they've run out of ice cream? You told me they were going to be...